What's happening guys, it's Shane here. So I've made other videos talking about degrees that are great, you should definitely go for that will lead to you being able to buy as much avocado toast and Starbucks coffee as you could ever want. I don't like coffee, it's a vassal constrictor. And I've also talked about degrees that you should avoid because they will likely lead to you serving the toast and the coffee. But I've also realized just reading all the comments that have been left that a lot of people don't even know where to begin when it comes to choosing a degree that's gonna lead to them doing a job for the rest of their life. Whoa, hey! And can you really blame them? I mean, it's not really fair that society makes you make one of the biggest decisions you're ever gonna make in your entire life at the tender age of 17 or 18 years old. <laughs> And it's also a possibility that all the degrees that are sure things, you know, the ones that are definitely gonna get you a good job that I've mentioned in my other videos, maybe you're just not interested in any of those. They just aren't your thing. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can go about researching which degrees you should go for so that you can make it easier on yourself when you're making this huge life decision that is gonna affect, you know, many, many years of your life. You're gonna be going to college for four years of your life. Many of you will be going $40,000 into debt just to get a degree. And just by following the easy steps in this video, you will be able to make a short list of degrees that you can pursue, and you should be able to narrow it down to one winner. Bam! Just like that. And then at the very end, if you still haven't decided after going through all the steps, there's a really cool trick that I think helps a lot of people make the decision on which degree is right for them. All right, so the first step, and this is one of the most important things, is you want to start with the career in mind. So there's some degrees that are extremely obvious. You know, you go and you get a nursing degree, an RN, you're gonna become a nurse. But there's a lot of degrees where it's not nearly as obvious and there's certain jobs that favor some degrees over others. So a really smart thing you can do is start searching for what careers that you want to have. Then you can reverse engineer it, look up people who are in that career currently on LinkedIn or maybe reach out to your network and then figure out you know what college did they go to what degree did they get was it an associate's degree was it a bachelor's degree which major was it maybe they had to go all the way six years in order to get a master's in order to qualify for this job now as you do your research you're gonna start noticing patterns you're probably gonna notice that like 80% of them got the same degree and then using this information you can make a really good plan on how you're going to land that job so I'll just give an example of this I'm totally just gonna make this up off the top of my head but let's say you want to become a dermatologist you know a lot of dermatologists just majored in biochemistry in undergrad or maybe they majored in chemistry or biology you get what I mean you reverse engineer it and then you figure out what the best plan of action is and if you think about it this really makes sense I mean what is the whole purpose of getting a degree in the first place the purpose of getting a degree is to set yourself up for success in the future so that you can get better jobs and you have better opportunities and this will help you figure out which degrees are gonna get you to the promised land and at the very least this is a great mental exercise exercise to just get you to start thinking about the future and planning ahead because that's something that almost nobody does now the second thing you can do is start with the company so you want to think of a company that you might want to work with maybe their mission statement is something you just really resonate with or maybe you just really love what the company is doing like you just really love what Google is working on right now or maybe you just really respect Jeff Bezos and you want to work for Amazon and then of course there's no secret that some companies treat their employees way better than others and you can kind of look this up on glassdoor.com you can actually look up company by company what their job satisfaction rating is but the most obvious example of this is going to be Google of course I mean they treat their employees so well they have so many benefits so many perks now imagine a place nothing like it and a million times better just to mention a few things they have a bunch of on-site restaurants that will make you just about any food that you want and it's all completely free these are complimentary complimentary free whatever you want they have free massages as well they've got free medical care so instead of having to wait a month to see your doctor you can just walk right in and see a doctor whenever you want and it's all completely free you don't have to worry about the insurance or the billing or anything like that there's free stress management free counseling free 
Sunday. There's scheduled exercise. There's scheduled free time where you can just do whatever you want. And in that free time, they have a ton of free classes that will teach you some of the most cutting edge subjects in the world. They also have a bunch of free speakers that come in. So the top guys in their industry will come in and they'll give you a speech and you might even be able to network with them. And so we're just scratching the surface here. The benefits are just unbelievable working at Google. Welcome to Google. And in any industry that you go in, there's gonna be a few companies that just treat their employees so much better. It's just part of their strategy. Their strategy is to treat their employees extremely well and they think that their employees are gonna work harder, they're gonna be more creative, they're gonna be you know, less stressed, better rested, they're probably not gonna leave the company. So if your goal was to work at Google, for instance, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna look at their job openings and then see what sorts of jobs that they are really trying to get. You know, which which ones are they really going hard at hiring for? Vic, I got it. Google. You got us a job at Google. And then look up that job position on LinkedIn, see people who have that job position, see what schools they went to, see what level of you know degree that they got, see what major they got, and then just reverse engineer it. Another really great example of this would be in the business world and specifically finance. So at Goldman Sachs, their average employee salary is something like $367,000 a year. Wow. So the average salary for all the employees across the board is 367,000. They pay their employees extremely well. So let's say you wanted to work at Goldman Sachs as an investment banker. Well, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna look up people who are currently working there in that job position and then reverse engineer it, go through the same process, and then that will give you a very good idea of the path that you need to take in order to reach your goal. I think you get the point here. In every industry, there's gonna be some companies that are more desirable than others and if you start with the company in mind sometimes this is a very good strategy now the next one on the list is to start with the industry in mind and there's two different ways you can go about doing this the first way is you can pick something that you're extremely passionate about so let's say you're really passionate about skateboarding and you want to go into the skateboarding industry what you'd want to do is you'd want to look up the industry as a whole figure out what that industry needs you know where is there a lot of demand and there's not a lot of people meeting that demand yeah yeah, right. I'm just gonna make something up. Let's say they don't have enough, you know, people who are really good at video editing in the skateboarding industry. Well, if you wanna break into the industry, you would go on LinkedIn, look up people who have job positions that are in the industry, figure out, and then just go ahead and go through the same process of reverse engineering it. And this is a great way to break into an industry that you have a lot of passion for that otherwise you might not be able to break into just because there's just not that many jobs in that particular industry. Now, the second way of doing this is choose Choose an industry that's just doing really, really well. So choose an industry that's totally booming, it's growing extremely fast. Like an example of this would of course be the tech industry. You go, you study the industry, you find out what jobs are super hot, which jobs are they trying to get people to fill, and then you go, search those people up, use the reverse engineering strategy, and bam, you're good. Now, the great thing about going into a booming industry is there's just so much opportunity, and so once you get your foot in the door, you establish yourself as as a professional, you do a really good job, there is gonna be a lot of opportunity for you to job hop and you might end up doing something that's completely unrelated to your degree, but maybe it has better quality of life or maybe it pays better or something along those lines. Or maybe you work in the industry for a while, you see a huge opportunity and you decide to start your own business. And going into a booming industry like this has so many opportunities and so much flexibility. So if you wanna go for the money, go for the big bucks. Show me the money! You can definitely go that way. You can work super hard and you'll likely get promoted or maybe get a lot of opportunities or maybe you'll job hop because companies will really want whatever skill set you have. Or if you want to, you can go for a much more chill job where you have better quality of life, take a small pay cut, but still pretty good pay because they have so much money in the industry in the first place that it doesn't really matter. I have a friend who is in IT and he was working a job. He was getting paid about $130,000 a year, but it was a pretty tough job. And then he basically found a 
different job where it was about 110,000 or so every single year, but it was super chill and he could just do whatever he wanted on the job and then they just call him up like once a week or something like that. And so he preferred this other job even though he took a small pay cut. You get the idea. Sometimes it's just best to go where the money is and there's just gonna be a lot of opportunities that open up to you. Now, the fourth idea on this list is to simply start with the lifestyle in mind. So start thinking about what kind of lifestyle do you want to live in the future? Think about things like, where do you want to live? Do you want to travel for work or do you want to kind of you know work from home maybe? Do you want to be a homebody or maybe you just want to go into an office every single day? Do you want a type of job that will allow you to be a remote worker? Or maybe you want to be a remote worker just so that you can work from home and save money on gas and food. Another thing you want to think about when it comes to this is how much money do you want to make? Are you an extreme minimalist that can live off $20,000 a year and be super happy with it? Or are you kind of like an Epicurean? You want to experience the finer things in life. Then you're probably going to need at least a six-figure income. Or maybe you just want to save a ton of money and retire at an early age. And in that case, you'd probably have to have a higher income as well. These are all things that you want to think about. And then you want to figure out what sorts of jobs will provide you with that kind of lifestyle. And then you use the same process that I went over before. You reverse engineer it. You figure out what degrees lead to those types of jobs and then bam, you're good. So for instance, let's say you do want to live a remote lifestyle. You want to be a remote worker. Well, there's not that many jobs where you can be a remote worker. A lot of jobs require you to be on site. So you really do need to do your research and figure out which ones would allow you to have that kind of lifestyle. So one that would obviously allow you to live that sort of lifestyle would be computer science or different majors that are related to it. Now, all of these are going to help you make your decision when it comes to, you know, which degree you're going to go with, which job are you going to try to land in the future? But I think the biggest takeaway from this video is it's so important to plan ahead. There's this really good book and it's, you know, stood the test of time. It's by Stephen Covey and it's called The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And one of the seven habits is beginning with the end in mind. And planning ahead is so important when it comes to choosing your degree, especially in a day and age where if you choose the wrong degree, it's pretty much a total scam. And if you choose the right degree, it's one of the best investments that you'll ever make. And if you fail to plan, then you're pretty much planning to fail. But if you plan ahead, you might even be able to get a degree that's not generally considered to be good, but you did your research and you figured out the path that you needed to take in order to land a specific job or you know get in a specific industry that that degree will allow you to enter. Now, as promised, if you're still stuck at this point, Thank you very much for Slippy. This is what you should do. After you've narrowed it down to either a few jobs, a few industries, or maybe a few degrees, what you really want to do is talk to real people in real life. This is so important because there's gonna be all kinds of blogs and stuff out there that people write and they don't really know what they're talking about. It's so important to talk to a real person. This step is honestly mandatory. You really can't skip this step because it's gonna give you a realistic idea of what that career industry degree is actually like and this should lead to you making an informed decision on which path you should take and I can almost guarantee you that after you know making a list of degrees or careers that you want to go for and after you talk to a few people that are in those careers one of them will start standing out to you in your mind you'll naturally be inclined to go towards one of them and that is the one you should pick trust your gut when it comes to picking which career you want to go with because that's probably the one that's making you excited and you really want to be excited when you're going through four years of college, doing all this hard work, paying all this money. You want to be doing it for something that actually makes you excited and makes you get up in the morning. Make sure to check these videos out right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and comment down below. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.